Welcome to the Front's 24 Observers. Technology is changing the way we get our news, and the Observers is part of that. More and more events are caught on amateur video, especially mobile phones. We try to get close to those events and to the people living through them. We start this week in Iraq. 343 Iraqi civilians were killed last month. To many of us, that's just a number. But to our first observer, it's much more than that. We go to Baghdad with our observer, Mohammed. Central Baghdad, the 25th of October. A bomb has just gone off. The scene is caught on tape. Amateur footage. Two trucks loaded with explosives have caused a bloodbath. 155 people are dead, 500 wounded. The bombs went off outside the Justice Ministry. It's supposed to be the next safest place in Baghdad after the Green Zone. So how did the terrorists manage to get their trucks past the checkpoints that crisscross the sector? Mohammed works a few meters away from the scene of the attack. The checkpoints do more harm than good. They block traffic, but they don't stop the attacks. Soldiers go over the cars with a chemical detector, but the equipment doesn't work. It goes off sometimes if the driver's wearing perfume or if you have a can of oil in the boot. And when the detector goes off, the soldier just asks the driver if he's carrying a bomb. Who's going to say, yes, I'm carrying a bomb? Mohammed thinks the chemical detectors used by the Iraqi security services are completely useless. He's not the only one. The American army has come to the same conclusion, and they refuse to use the same detectors. Now we go to Tepic in Mexico with our observer, Antonio Tello. One of my Facebook friends showed me this video. You can find it on the internet. It's under the title, The Rats of Tepic. It gives me the chills. A group of teenagers had just robbed a house. They got caught by the police. Then they ended up, no one knows how, in the hands of some other people who mistreated them. If you live in Mexico, you get used to violence, but this video shocked Mexicans. How can someone do such things to kids, humiliate them, torture them like that, then film it and put it on YouTube? We've never seen anything like it here. The prosecutor's office gave a press conference saying they'd found the culprits, four building workers, but the media and the people didn't believe it because when you watch the video and you see the men torturing the kids, they look like drug traffickers, like guys from organized crime or even police officers. There's no way they're just ordinary working guys. I managed to talk to one of the boys in the video. He told me that after the police caught them, they were handed over to a group of drug lords. But of course, you have to be careful. These young people are on drugs, so you can't trust what they say. A Mexican MP has brought the case to the attention of the Parliament's Human Rights Commission. They're expected to reopen the case and punish the men who thought they could take justice into their own hands. We finish our trip in Moscow, Russia, with our observer Vladimir Paperne. In Soviet times, churches were used for everything, except praying. This one was a factory. Many were left ruined. Now, Orthodox followers are fighting back by seizing any building they can. Take this cinema, transformed into a church, and this, a former library. Any building can be turned into a church by a dedicated churchgoer. Vladimir Pepini is an expert in Soviet architecture. If this person has enough connections uh, in different governmental organizations and he has enough money, uh, there's no law that can stop this person from doing this. Yes, I'm sure that uh, United Russia uh, and uh, all uh, different groups of people who are running the country now they, they rely on Orthodox Church as, as, because it provides them with, with the symbolism uh, that was destroyed by Perestroika and um, uh, Gorbachev Yeltsin uh, period of time. The Orthodox Church says the number of believers in Russia has doubled since Soviet times. So we can expect to see more schools and libraries turned into churches. That's it for this week. 
Make sure to go to our website to check out other stories from our observers and learn out how you can join us. Maybe you'll see your report on our show next time. See you next week. Thank you.